There's an interesting story coming out in Kotaku, Australia this week as uh, the developer there, Halfbrick, has uh, decided that they want to get rid of their game designers and have basically declared that this position has become redundant. They're the makers of uh, really popular games like Fruit Ninja, so it's worth paying attention to. The question is, like, what does that even mean? And are game designers actually redundant? So, um, you know, there's these two individuals that had some pretty decent mobile games over there, um, including Jetpack Joyride and Age of Zombies, games you might have played. And uh, Shani Aldeo, the studio's uh, CEO, um, said that in a statement to Gama Sutra that they would rather, rather than design being its own silo, they wanted everyone on the team to be empowered to contribute to design. Um, you know, the maker Double Fine has a very similar kind of process where they've grabbed certain people from the team to create different games. Um, uh, and it's got, you know, for some of you, that might sound like a little bit iffy, this idea of like getting rid of game designers. But then it got me thinking, maybe Half Brick does have a point. Do we actually need game designers? So games as a medium are basically at, you know, there's two different ways to think about it. So on the one hand, video games have this long lineage of great game designers. Shigeru Miyamoto, who designed Mario and Zelda. There's Warren Spector, who created Deus Ex. Clint Hawking, who did the Splinter Cell series. And Far Cry, Kim Swift, who created uh, Portal. But the thing is that, you know, designers have to work in teams, with some exceptions, like Jonathan Blow making Braid. And again, these exceptions tend to be games on a much, much smaller scale. Um, so it, because if you look at a big game like Halo 5, for example, the duty of balancing the weapons in every possible scenario is too overwhelming for a single person um, since there are lots of data points that uh, that need tweaking. And then there are games like Minecraft where the game design is this like gradually shifting amorphous thing and was tweaked over a long period of time. So it's kind of hard to say who the you know actual designer of that game is. It began by Notch but then the game designer later became uh, Jens, Jens Bergman who took over the design role. Then there's all the beta testers whose uh, involvement helped shape the design of the game and then the rest of the Minecraft team who are involved in all of these smaller things like tweaking shield damage, it's clearly a group collective effort. I think that ultimately the sort of tension between uh, sort of singular individuals and larger group efforts is a sign that games are starting to mirror other disciplines in terms of creativity. So in design with a capital D, for example, you have Eames, uh, sort of the, you know, the Eameses of the world who designed the Eames chair, as well as these like, you know, larger design houses that sort of put things out into the world as a collective effort. So for example, if you look back at car design um, to sort of mirror these two different creative polls. In the 60s, you had designers like Paul Lombardin, who was the chief of the styling department at uh, Pin and Frida. And at Pin and Frida was this famed Italian car design firm that gave the Ferrari its signature look. Martin was very much the auteur and ended up drafting one of the most amazing looking cars ever, the Ferrari Modulo. And the Modulo went on to inspire a whole generation of very cool, what are called wedge car designs in the 70s, including the DeLorean, of course. And I think that's a testament to what a really good designer ultimately can do. Paolo Martin also had to work with engineers and a design team to really make it happen. There are plenty of the car designs and car design objects um, that are these group efforts. So for example, the smart car, which was this tiny little economical car that was designed in the 1990s as a collaboration effort between Swatch and Mercedes-Benz's design team. So that was sort of represents this other way of sort of creating new things. So the answer is like many things, it depends. We certainly need game designers with specialization in the art form, but certainly not in all circumstances because designing games can also be these great collaborative group efforts. So maybe Halfbrick just realized that they didn't necessarily have this like Miyamoto-like figure whose instincts are always correct and a group structure was just a better fit for them and their team and the types of games that they want to make. So what do you think? Should games be the work of a single individual, um, something that a single person can kind of put their name to, or will they always be group efforts? Hash it out in the comments, and if you like what you saw, please subscribe. I'll see you next week.